Welcome to Scary Story Podcast. This episode has stories of entities that lurk in the dark. One takes place at a hospital, and the other at an area that's a bit more common for ghosts. My name is Edwin, and here is a scary story. Hospitals haven't changed much since I was little, and at least not in that town. They still have the individual doctors setting up their offices after they go out to study in the city. The ones that are more attached to their family or to the place itself seem to always come back. And you know it too when they're leaving and you can just tell that as soon as they get their diploma, they will be right back. The same goes with the others, those young ones that spend too much time on their phones and computers. You just know they simply can't wait to get out of here. But when I visited that old place once again, I was surprised to see the paved streets. They used to be made of dirt. People were now wearing the uniforms and you can tell which one worked at the bank and which one worked at the hospital. Everyone had a role now. Most of the buildings looked the same though, run down and the paint peeling on the side of them. You know, the area that didn't face the street. That hadn't changed. But along with the same old hospital building, all of the memories of the recovery room were coming back. The story itself was a big deal, and it wasn't only mine, there were others too. When one of the candidates for mayor was hospitalized and was forced by the newspapers to stay in the recovery room just like all of the town citizens, he too had an experience in there. That's how it became big news, though most of us already knew about it through rumors and the stories that happened to a friend of a friend. I was that person in some cases, at least I think so, because I told everybody I knew about what I had experienced. I had gotten off a minor surgery procedure due to a broken arm, when one of the neighbors jumped onto the same branch of the avocado tree and we both went straight down to the hardened dirt and rock as soon as it snapped. The other kid got a nosebleed from hitting his face against my skull. But still, in the end, I got the worst part of the incident. The pain was creeping in after some of the medication started wearing out, but mainly it was discomfort, not full-on pain. My parents, aunts, and uncles were all there to see me, making a big crowd inside that open room with a dozen or so beds lined up against the walls, a handful on each side. There was another girl with her mom across from my bed, looking at a magazine. I could tell the woman was annoyed, but the girl was smiling at seeing so many people inside that room for once. Once everyone left and the sun started to set, filling the white walls with that golden light, I started thinking about how terrible it was being there by myself. I would miss a soccer game, the next two days of school, and now even normal things would take longer to do. It would be that way for weeks. But we don't have those same things anymore, right? Big rooms with large windows that let exterior light inside at hospitals. Fully equipped with a nurse that is not afraid to scold you when you do something you're not supposed to do. Yeah, lots of things had changed. But I heard that one thing hadn't changed about that old hospital. The first night I was there and the lights went off, I stared toward the ceiling, unable to fall asleep. I'm like that with new places. I can't find my spot on the bed and simply turn over and adjust the blanket as often as possible. The girl across from me made a sudden noise. but She was right in the darkest part of the room, so I was not able to see what happened. Was it a bottle? Marble rolling toward me? As my eyes adjusted to the low light from her corner of the room, I thought I saw her sit on the edge of her bed. The thin mattress bending slightly underneath her. I wanted to ask her if she was okay, but I was too scared to say anything. Those nurses were meaner to kids, especially if they woke them up at night. But the bend on the mattress went away as she stood up and walked toward the foot of the bed, looking directly at her own pillow. I saw her shadow get thinner as she turned to her side and walked toward the bed next to hers, blindly going bed to bed until she ended on my side of the room and approaching the bed I was taking up. There was more light where I was, and that's when I was able to tell that the girl was far too short to be the same girl I had seen during the day. 
Her hair was dark and her skin was pale. Yet she seemed to be walking around like a blind person, feeling the edges of the beds, almost as if she was looking for something. She was two beds away from mine when I saw her standing at the foot of one, standing still with her arms to her side, before suddenly reaching toward the blankets as if expecting someone's legs to be there. I didn't know who she was, so I simply laid there, frozen, trying desperately to get my legs to react so that I could pull them closer to me for when she came. She was on the bed next to mine when I got a clear view of her, young, She must have been six years old, her head barely reaching the top of the frame of the beds as I saw her round face, every part of her skin glowing against the light from the outside. Everything except her eyes. She turned toward me. I saw her float toward the edge of my bed once again, entering the dark part, most of her face and body hidden from sight. I saw her arms stretch toward the edge of the bed and reach for the bed sheets. She knew there was somebody there. She smiled. I tried to scream, but instead I remember crying until I fell asleep, not seeing where the girl had gone or if she was still there. My parents had come to see me early in the morning with the doctor speaking with them next to my bed. The girl on the other side of the room kept looking my way as she spoke to her mother or whoever the other woman was next to her. I started sitting up on my bed and the doctor was still talking to my mom while dad listened with his arms crossed. The woman and the girl exchanged a few words before the woman stood up and walked toward me, telling the girl that she would ask me about whatever they were talking about, seemingly frustrated. Can you tell little Mary here that you didn't see a little girl walking around here last night? My eyes opened wide. The doctor turned my way. Mom and dad were confused, but I could tell it was my turn to say something. The doctor chuckled. The ghost girl, oh yeah, watch out, he said. He had probably heard that story enough times and was just as tired of it as the woman who asked me that question. I saw her, I replied. The girl across the room stretched her arms forward and seemed to be relieved to hear my answer. It took a long time before anyone figured out the real story of the ghost of the hospital room. But most believed that it was the daughter of a man who had gotten sick and was staying at the hospital. She would come by and visit every day, by herself. Of course, they were different times back then. Until one day, she was killed on her way there while crossing the street. They say she's friendly and doesn't cause too much trouble. I wonder if she's still around. I was out by the cemetery where they had these huge apple trees. It sounds bizarre to say those things right off the bat, but as kids... Apples and fruit trees were the coolest things ever because they were basically free food. We didn't grow up with a lot of money. So the neighborhood kids and I climbed to the top whenever we saw that the cemetery gates were open, which was rare. Visitors had to enter through a little security booth thing that they had, but the gates were reserved for when cars were coming in with a coffin inside. My friend knocked on the door right after I had gotten home from school, telling me that him and two other kids were going to go to the cemetery and to grab my shoes. So I did. I grabbed an old canvas bag and my shoes and took off running toward the cemetery to get some apples. It was a thing we had done dozens of times. This time, when I was on top of one of the large branches, I saw a truck coming in down toward the long road that led to the other side of the cemetery. We all just sort of stopped and looked in the truck's direction. I'm sure we were all wondering who was inside. For some reason, we didn't seem to mind all the headstones around the trees where we were hanging out. I heard some apples fall to the ground as Mike, one of the older kids from the group, yelled out, Look! I looked right up toward him and then followed his finger down to the side of one of the headstones. There was a group of them there, and I'm not sure what you call them, but they were like stalls with text etched on the sides of them. 
I thought they were like gravestones of the rich people in town, but one of the other kids called them dead houses. So that's what I knew them by. Right on the side of one of those dead houses came out a silhouette, dressed in a white suit and a golden necklace. It was an old man, it looked like, with white hair and his arms at his side. We all stood quiet. He walked slowly toward the tree and right from the base of it looked up at us. His face wrinkled like I had never seen before. His voice boomed when he told us to stop picking the apples. We all froze in place until he turned around and walked back to the dead house. I looked up at Mike and he looked down at the rest of us. He said he was probably a crazy man and we should wait until he leaves. We stood there trying not to move a muscle for a very long time and nobody ever came out. We had a clear view of the dead house. We could all see around it. There was no movement. No sound. Nothing. But as we were standing there, grabbing onto the branches, we all heard a deep shriek coming in the direction of where the so-called dead house was. The one where he had disappeared into. We all jumped from the tree trying to leave with as many apples as we had picked, but I simply left mine. I took off toward the main gate as fast as I could as I heard one of the other kids scream behind me. I stopped and turned around. He had tripped and was on a patch of grass between two headstones, yelling for no apparent reason. That's when I saw the same figure from before coming up behind him. It was clear this time. The old man could barely walk this time around, and the kid had plenty of time to stand up and run toward us, but he screamed even louder when he turned his head and saw the figure for himself. Eventually, he managed to stand up and keep running. I started running too. We saw a group of adults over by the other side of the cemetery, and we all sort of agreed to head toward them and get help. The group that was standing there didn't seem to notice us. Their heads bowed down as they lined up in a semicircle. I was trying to hold my breath as to not make a sound and disturb their prayer as I walked up toward them. Some had their eyes closed, yet a few of them seemed to notice us. Without turning around, they simply opened a gap between them so that we could join them. I looked up at one of them as he moved aside. But before I could tap him on the arm, I noticed the open coffin in the middle of them. The corpse laying there with his mouth slightly open his wrinkled face, his white suit clearly visible, the gold necklace still around his neck. Scary Story Podcast is produced by me, Edwin Covarrubias. If you'd like to get notifications when new episodes come out, be sure to visit scarystorypodcast.com and click follow right now on your podcast player. If you'd like to join us on Discord, I'll leave a link in the description of this episode. Until next time, thank you very much for listening.